Hello everybody. Uh, I hope you're well today. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen it. Uh, it's been going around. A lot of people have mirrored it. Uh, a video about the God gene, they calling it. Uh, uh, how they plan on treating it. As if it's a defect. I'll show clips of it and give you a critique here later on in this video. It's voodoo science and it uh, reeks of eugenics and um, it is wrong. Now, before you go get all on your high horse attack me and call me some religious nut. And let me point out to you that uh, I was an atheist most of my life. I hated religion. Still don't like religion. But came to know of God. And it's uh, not a religious thing, but a uh, spiritual, personal relationship thing. Now, I know some of you don't understand that either. Um, if believing in something makes a religion, then atheists are just as religious. Except they believe in a negative. And how do they know in their research that the person with this gene is the defective one. How do they know that it's not the one who doesn't have this gene that's defective and lacks connection with God? Voodoo science. Excuse me, on the left over here we have individuals who are religious fun fundamentalists, religious fanatics. And this is the expression, uh, RT-PCR, real-time PCR uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here, we have individuals, so, so, so let, let me complete. So over here, we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalist, not particularly religious, and you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that, that supports our, our hypothesis for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, what you, what you see here is by, by, by spreading this excuse me, on the left over here we have individuals who are religious fun fundamentalists, religious fanatics. So being a religious fundamentalist makes you a religious fanatic. Uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here, we have individuals. So, so, so let, let me complete. So over here, we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalists, not particularly religious. You mean atheists? There's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 gene. They have a reduced uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that gene. That In other words, our, they have a gene that they don't use. Of, of, so of this, having uh, the approach. gene is not uh, make you defective, but having it being active makes you defective. Now, how is that uh, fit with evolution? So our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people. Their uh, hypothesis is that if you're religious, you're fanatic. That two gene and that by vaccinating them against this, they want to vaccinate you against uh, so we have religion. Some, some very, very uh, remarkable data in this next slide. Uh, here here we goes have the two, thing that uh, destroys them. These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of VMAT2. Uh, on top uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic. Religious fanatic. Who, we've repeated this numerous times. That's, uh, uh, How do they know he's a religious fanatic? Did they catch him in the act of planting a bomb or or something? These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of the Or is it, of or is it just that the uh, man's religious? On top 
uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic, an individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has uh, high levels of EMAT2. So, uh, two. Now, two. Let me get this straight here. The religious fanatic uses the middle frontal gyrus. That's the part of the brain where your logic is, where uh, your thinking is, where your uh, rational think thought comes from. Could not the religious person, when hearing a religious text, simply be thinking of what is being said and how it relates to their lives? Down here, this region here, of the unbeliever, you ever wonder why unbelievers don't like to hear scriptures? Well, it's because it activates the part of the brain of dislike and distaste, hatred even. In other words, it pisses an atheist off to hear the scriptures which explains why they don't understand the Bible or don't like to read it and prefer to burn it. Uh, the book is uncomfortable to them. The scriptures are uncomfortable to their minds. Anic and individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has a high level of EMAT2. Now, um, now this individual uh, down here who had low it levels appears of to me EMAT2 gene, this individual that the individual who has low levels of this EMAT2 gene they're talking about is the defective one their response is irrational why should words read to them from an old book piss them off is that rational is it rational You know, the sad thing about this video, you look at the date, six years old. This was in a Pentagon briefing six years ago. Have they already implemented this fun vax that they talk about? Is this fun vax already being used? Is it in a chemtrail being sprayed on us? Is it, is it being sprayed over the Middle East? makes you wonder doesn't it it won't work I can tell you it won't work and I bet you they have tried it and it hasn't worked they'll be confounded in this they'll be confounded in this because their hypothesis is wrong to begin with and their conclusions therefore are wrong now I told you that it was mentioned in the Bible I'll just give you a part of that, and you'll maybe understand it. Okay, go to Psalms 2, verse 2, and it reads, The kings of the earth set themselves, the kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing, anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath. These people are fixing to know God's wrath. And I don't think I'd want to be them. This fun vax, as they call it. Vaccination against fundamentalism. I'm not a fundamentalist myself, but I have a belief in God. And I love my God. And uh, they're not going to separate me from Him. Whether or not I have this gene they're talking about, whether it's 
active or not, I don't know. You know, like I said, I was an atheist most of my life. I hated the scriptures. It would irritate me anytime someone tried reading them to me. What caused my change? Did that gene suddenly become active for some reason when it wasn't before? Now when I read the scriptures, I think about what it says deeply and consider it and what it means in my life. I don't plan on going out and blowing anything up. I don't consider myself a fanatic. Do you think I'm a fanatic? Does it make you a fanatic just because you believe in a god? According to many atheists, just believing in a god makes you a defective or brainwashed. I say it's the other way around. I say it's just the opposite of that. The fact that you cannot see the obvious in front of your face. That there is a God. And then nothing I can show you is going to make you believe it because if you can't see it already, there ain't no point in even trying to show it to you. It's right in front of your face. You just gotta open your eyes and look at it. But many of you won't because you prefer the way you set your mind to believe. You prefer your sin to God's love. Now that's sad because you you separate yourself from the greater part of what it is to be alive and be human by doing this. And you will never be filled by all your earthly desires and all the pleasure seeking that you do. You will not be pleased by it but for moments and it will let you down hard but God is not that way at all. He won't let you down hard. Look deep, deep inside the very pit of your being, the darkest deep down inside of yourself, and you know, you know, there's something greater out there bless you all. Peace, love, and understanding be with you.